Hey folks, video here about writing a personal narrative. Um, so we know that we're going to be writing a personal narrative that kind of covers the beginning, the middle, the end, the exposition, the rising action, and the resolution of our story. Um, and ultimately our learning goals are we're going to learn how to write narratives in order to develop real experiences. We're going to try to choose some effective techniques. Uh, we're going to look into some well-chosen details and we're going to structure events um, in a way that makes sense. So what I want you to do first um, before we really talk about writing your own personal narrative, is I want you to read a personal narrative. Um, so this is an excerpt from Travels with Charlie, uh, written by John Steinbeck, and I literally want you to pause this video, go to this URL, and read it. Did you do it? No, no, no. Go ahead and pause it. Go read it. It's short. We're going to talk about it at the end. All right, you got it? Sweet. Let's move on. Um, so when I think about writing a personal narrative, I also wanted to think about that writing process. Like we should still be going through our standard writing process where we're coming up with an idea, invention, we're planning, we're drafting, we're revising, and we're editing. That's still all part of our writing process. But in terms of that invention part of the process, uh, we need to start with an event um, or something that has happened to you. Because right, this is a personal narrative, something reflecting on an idea that has happened in your life. Um, and so it's great to start with an event. What's even better is to think of the meaning behind that event. So you pick something important to you in your life. I want you to think about why that was important. Um, because as you noticed in Travels with Charlie, uh, Steinbeck was writing about this, you know, interesting event, this anecdote that happened as he was like driving through the Mojave Desert. Um, but it ended on a much bigger note than like, hey, I saw some coyotes in you know, the desert. Um, it built to this really, a much bigger purpose, right? So Steinbeck took that event that he remembered over from his travels, he thought of the meaning behind that event, and then he wrote with kind of purpose to say, think about like, how could I take this event and make this bigger than just myself? Like what bigger idea can I represent or create um, by writing this narrative? So obviously I don't expect you guys all to be Steinbeck, but I do expect you to think about like, why am I writing this narrative? What is anyone else going to get out of my telling of this story, right? Because that's the beauty about literature and communication and creative writing is that I can express something bigger than myself. I can make a real realization about the world and share it um, in this unique medium, in this unique art form. So um, to get there, we do have to make some pretty clear and some difficult choices that, you know, unless you've been writing for a long time um, in your life that you might struggle with. And that's okay. That's what we're working on. Um, so in the exposition, the beginning of our story, sometimes it's really tough to think about where to start, um, what to include, and how are we going to build background. And my best advice that I can give is start as close to the event as you possibly can, right? When we read about, when you read Steinbeck um, and Travels with Charlie, he didn't just start you know, okay, for three days I'd been traveling through the desert and then, you know, on this day I did this and this day on this and this day I did this and then finally I saw the coyotes. No, he starts like the afternoon that he sees the coyotes, like gives us a little bit of exposition about the desert, then boom, um, he gets out of the car, he feeds his dog, he sees the coyotes. Um, start right where the action is going to be happening. Um, and then build your background as sparingly or as, as deeply as you want, right? Um, again, I'm going to reference that Steinbeck story that you all read, if you're this far in the video. Um, he taught, spends like two sentences giving a big, um, really in-depth description of the Mojave Desert. He introduces his dog in one sentence, and then we're on to the story. We're on to the conflict and the rising action, right? It's short. He gets there right away. And that's what I want you to do in your narratives, because they're only two pages long. Um, and then you have to think about where is this conflict and how am I going to present this conflict? Uh, those are tough things to choose. And what I can say is just keep that idea of purpose in mind. Like what are, why are you deciding to talk about this um, conflict or this event in your life? Um, and with that idea of like, okay, here's what I'm building to, that might help you understand uh, what I need to introduce in terms of my conflict. And then where and how are you gonna end your story? Um, you don't have to tie everything up nice and neatly, but what I do want is a clear sense of kind of meaning represented in your uh, resolution, in your conclusion. Um, now this does look very much like kind of a traditional um, essay in English class, because we have a beginning kind of supporting paragraphs and a conclusion, 
but it's not like we have the ability to break free of our standard, you know, paragraph structures and our really um, formal language. So some writing trips tips that you might um, include or use in this narrative is number one, break that mold, right? You can use short paragraphs. Your paragraphs don't have to be five to seven sentences long, right? Um, in Travels with Charlie, as I'll point out, um, he has a couple paragraphs that are like one sentence or three sentences long. They still have to be paragraphs. They still have to be kind of self-contained and make sense as to why I have a break on each side of this, you know, one sentence paragraph. But you can use those short paragraphs. Um, and in this, I want to hear your unique voice. I want to hear you as a person telling me this story. Um, now, obviously, I still want you to use correct grammar and punctuation because otherwise it's really difficult for me to understand what you're reading. But that um, means that you can be a little bit more free with the language that you use. Um, you don't have to just use this like proper academic tone. You can be a lot more lighthearted. You can be funny. You can be serious. It's your story. You need to choose a tone that's going to fit that story well. Um, and you can use I. Um, don't be afraid of that at all in a personal narrative. Um, don't overuse it. Again, look to Steinbeck because he uses I, but it's not like every sentence starting with I. I did this. I did this. I did this. I did this. Absolutely not. That gets really boring really quickly. Um, instead, <clears throat> how you can kind of break that up is don't explain everything that you did by saying like, I walked to the store, then I bought a candy bar, right? A cool story, bro. Um, but instead work on some of that description. How are you going to introduce and include some of these sensory descriptions? What do things smell like, taste like, feel like? Um, what do they see? What can I see? Um, and that really helps put your reader in the pilot seat to experience uh, this event that happened to you um, kind of through their, through your own eyes. And then the last one that you can play around with is add some dialogue, have some people talk to each other. Uh, and the great thing is, is it doesn't even have to be people. Uh, Cause if we take a look at the Steinbeck, <clears throat> let's do a quick analysis of this. So number one, I want you to take a look at the exposition here. Um, we've got some really great description of the Mojave desert. We've got a brief introduction of his dog and then boom, the action starts right here. I pulled over, to give my dog some water. Um, and then this is, you know, what it was like with the air was so dry that evaporation makes you feel suddenly cold. Right. So I'm st still kind of world building saying like, here's what it's like to be in the desert, but the action has started. I pulled off the road into a still gully to give him some water. And this is what kind of sets the action, um, into motion, right? Him pulling off the road. If he didn't pull off this road, nothing would have happened. So this is like a great place to start the actual story. <clears throat> We've got one short one sentence paragraph here. So take a look at how he does that to kind of set the scene of what he's seeing, what's going on. Um, and then boom, right here, third paragraph, he sees the coyotes. Um, and all over, and you know, we in, are introduced to the conflict and then right away we start to get this kind of building of tension because he's slowly reaching to grab his 22 rifle because his instinct is to kill these coyotes. Um, and then take a look at how this action kind of plays out, how he starts to build the tension, build the conflict um, within this story. So initially it's about him versus these coyotes. Like I'm going to have to kill them and I don't want to startle them as I'm grabbing my gun. But then he starts to have second thoughts um, where he starts thinking about them as as creatures who are just trying to get by, um, not necessarily the vermin um, that steal chickens that he's been trained to think of them as, right? So it goes from an external conflict to an internal conflict. And then take a look at this nice short paragraph and look at how he uses dialogue. My training said, shoot. And my age responded, uh, there isn't a chicken within 30 miles, right? He hasn't introduced new characters. He's just kind of personified these ideas in his brain between his training, like what he was raised and brought up to do um, in California, versus his age, kind of experience with life and um, living beings. Um, and this now becomes the central conflict of the story, is his internal struggle of like, do I kill these things or do I not? Um, and then take a look at his conclusion. Again, he ends in two very, very short paragraphs. This is not very long at all. Um, this is a, what, a three sentence paragraph? <clears throat> where he reflects on another time in his life where he heard like a, a Chinese, an unwritten Chinese um, law that says, when you save another man's life, he becomes responsible to that life to the ends of his existence. So 
that connects back to the coyotes because Steinbeck is saying, okay, because I spared your life, I am now responsible for your life. And he decides to leave two cans of dog food to help them get along through the desert. And, you know, the story shifts. And, and I want you to think about the purpose that Steinbeck had for telling this, where he's taking this, you know, internal conflict about I've been trained to kill coyotes ever since I was a little boy. And his realization is that, you know, it's all about context and these coyotes aren't hurting any farmers around here in the middle of the desert. So why would I kill them, right? Some compassion and some empathy and some care, some stewardship kind of takes over for Steinbeck. Um, and instead of killing them, he ends up helping them, right? There's a nice conclusion that's a little bit bigger than, hey, this story is about some coyotes that I saw. It's much more about like thinking about the context of a situation and learning from past experience and treating others, even if they're coyotes with empathy. Cool. So this use this as a great template for you. It's about how long I want your um, personal narratives to be and good luck folks.